Planet Earth is 4.5 billion years old. The earliest complex life first appeared around 1 billion years ago. In the hundreds of millions of years since then, our planet has faced five major extinction events. From giant impactors to supervolcanoes to potential gamma ray bursts, the causes of each extinction have generally been apocalyptic single events. Now, for the first time in human history, our species is experiencing an ongoing extinction all around us. And the cause isn't a giant meteor or gamma ray burst, it's us. As we enter the new decade, recent scientific studies have helped to shed light on just how extreme the situation is, and what ramifications we can expect. As the human race has expanded its control over the planet and its resources, other forms of life have faced greatly reduced habitats and sometimes complete annihilation. Unless immediate action is taken, elephants could disappear from Africa within a generation, critical bee populations could collapse, and the oceans will become so acidic that the remainder of the coral reefs will die. As of 2019, 1 million out of the planet's 8 million species are at risk of extinction, and the global rate of species extinction is thousands of times higher than it has been on average over the past 10 million years. The primary reasons for this should be obvious by now. The destruction of plant and animal habitats, the exploitation of the planet's natural resources, huge amounts of pollution, and climate change. A recent United Nations report has determined that since pre-industrial times, humans have altered 73% of the planet's land and 66% of its marine ecosystems. This alteration varies by location, from strip mining for valuable minerals to dumping trash into bodies of water. The bottom line is that we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Leaving aside the ethical implications of eradicating much of the life on Earth and destroying once pristine environments, we're also threatening our own food supply. Agriculture is at risk due to reduced biodiversity, we've overfished the oceans, exhausted once fertile land, and we have more mouths to feed than ever. If this trend continues, we'll be in a pretty tough spot in the coming decades. So what do we do? In early January 2020, the UN Convention on Biological Diversity released a plan to adapt and respond to the ongoing biodiversity crisis we've created. This isn't the first time we've tried to implement risk mitigation measures. The UN set similar targets in 2010, but as humans usually do, we failed to meet most of the goals for the decade and now face a far worse problem than we had 10 years ago, including risk for our own survival. The new plan states, biodiversity and the benefits it provides is fundamental to human well-being and a healthy planet. Despite ongoing efforts, biodiversity is deteriorating worldwide and this decline is projected to continue or worsen under business as usual scenarios. It goes on to say, the framework aims to galvanize urgent and transformative action by governments and all of society, including indigenous peoples and local communities, civil society and businesses to achieve the outcomes. The main goal is to stabilize the planet's threatened biodiversity by 2030 and allow ecosystems to recover by 2050, finally realizing the vision of, quote, living in harmony with nature. That's something that a lot of people tend to scoff at. Humans like to think of themselves as above nature rather than part of it. We rely on stable ecosystems and a healthy planet too. And as the most advanced species on Earth, we should see ourselves as stewards of the planet's precious and fragile life forms and resources. So what specifics does the plan offer? One of the main methods of achieving the 2030 goals is through conservation, specifically giving protected status to areas important for biodiversity. The UN is aiming for 30% of these land and sea areas to be fully protected by 2030, with at least 10% of them under quote, strict protection. Another crucial step outlined in the plan is the reduction of pollution. The framework aims to reduce pollution from plastic waste, biocides, and excess nutrients by at least 50%. Other methods include clamping down on the trade of plant and animal species and ensuring that trade is done legally and sustainably, which will go a long way towards both protecting at-risk species and limiting the introduction of non-native species into fragile ecosystems. But not all of the goals are about conservation and plants and animals. Some are focused on improving human quality of life and hoping that, by extension, these improvements will reduce human-wildlife conflict. These changes would include providing better food security and clean drinking water for vulnerable communities. The UN plan is bold and comprehensive, and could be incredibly beneficial to the planet and the human race if we meet their targets. But what if we don't? How will this sixth major extinction event affect us? The biggest risk for humans is how fragile our global food supply is. If we can't produce enough food to feed our various populations, we're in for some real trouble. For years now, thanks to human activity, biodiversity at the genetic, species, and ecosystem levels have all been declining. Long story short, that means our food and agricultural systems are losing their ability to respond to and recover from shocks caused by disease or the changing climate. 40% of insects are at risk of extinction, including bees, which play a crucial role in pollination, and over 25% of large livestock breeds are at risk as well. We're destroying critical plant species at a breakneck pace. 600 species of plant have gone extinct in the last 250 years. 
a rate 500 times faster than would have occurred before human interference. Unfortunately for us, the problem is only going to get worse. As our activity continues to annihilate plant and animal species and ecosystems at an alarming rate, our population continues to grow. It's estimated there will be 8.6 billion people on Earth by 2030, and 9.8 billion by 2050. More people means more demand for resources and land. And with our available resources dwindling and much of the planet's surface already fully exploited, we're going to have quite a predicament on our hands. Now, this isn't to say that the world is overpopulated. It's not. And it won't be in 2050. We just need to be more conscious of how we use available land and resources. We need to practice sustainable farming, fishing, and development. We need to drastically reduce our carbon footprint, tidy up after ourselves, and realize that the planet isn't going to take care of itself. It's time we started acting like the highly advanced species we are and take some accountability for our actions. The new UN plan is a good place to start.